Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com, on Roku, in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News, on iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, longtime subscribers know that I'm a big fan, huge fan of Olympic gold medalist James DeGale. I've picked DeGale in some big fights and I personally believe that DeGale's style is just going to be too much for Carl Froch if the two guys ever meet. Quite frankly, I'm a skeptic on whether Carl Froch ever agrees to that fight because I believe Carl Froch wants his place in history in British boxing. And the only way he can knock himself off that mantle is by losing to a British young lion. And I believe that Carl Froch would rather fight guys from outside of the United Kingdom, let's say Mikel Kessler, perhaps Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., maybe another match with Andre Ward, than he would fight a James DeGale. Let's face it, too, he got back into fighting against George Groves. Also, the person who was hesitant to have the rematch was Carl Froch. George Groves, of course, wanted the rematch as soon as the first fight ended. Right? In my opinion, the hesitation was because George Groves is a countryman and I believe privately Carl Froch understands that some of these young lions are better athletes than Froch. In other words, George Groves has the hand speed advantage, has the foot speed advantage, and of course has youth on his side. Right? Well, let me say this. As bullish as I am on James DeGale, I'm even more bullish in my belief that styles make fights. Right? At the elite level, when you're fighting against contenders, I'm also a believer that there's no such thing as a tune-up fight. I've seen too many elite fighters lose these so-called tune-up fights, right? More importantly, I have my own private list of guys who I feel are undervalued, who I feel the public are wrong about. And one of them is Marco Antonio Parabin. I believe the Gale has received really bad advice. It's mind-blowingly bad advice. I don't even understand how James the Gale could consider fighting a fighter as dangerous. Let me underline that word, as dangerous as Marco Antonio Parabin. Right? James the Gale He's a man who I believe will be king. But I'm looking for value. And right now in this fight, a fight I consider as one that will be harder for James DeGale than a match against Carl Froch. In this fight, the play I like is to take Parabin at 5-1 to one to win the fight hedged with the Gale by KO. Right? Paraben has been on the canvas before. Right? But just understand, Paraben is exactly the kind of opponent that will give a James the Gale problems. Right? Paraben is tall. Paraben is high volume when he wants to be. He can move around the ring when he wants to move around the ring. More importantly, the best part of Parabin's game is that Parabin is mentally tough. This is a guy who fought for the title against Saki Obika in Brooklyn. He goes to Vegas. He fights the local fighter, J Jelly and Love, right, in Vegas. Understand. He's a guy who was able to go the distance both times. He doesn't believe the hype 
I believe in his heart he knew he was better than Jelly and Love. Right? They didn't give him the decision in Vegas, even though he's the guy who scored the knockdown in the fight. I believe he knew he was better than Badu Jack, unbeaten fighter, who he fought in Las Vegas. They didn't give him the decision. It was officially ruled a draw. Right? Just understand that Paraben has had many photo finishes. Many that could have gone his way. He could easily have been champion. Depending on how you interpreted the last three rounds of his fight against Saki Obika. Right? Understand too, Paraben is a bit of a chameleon. Right? He can move around the ring. If he wants, he can get on his horse and he can duplicate George Grove's style. Understand, that's the style that gave the Gale the most problems. Right? Perryman also can sit down on his punches. You know, I believe he hits harder than it looks on film. On film, he's a tall, lanky guy. Right? In reality, when you see him inside, he knows what he's doing. In my opinion, this fight is the best fight on the Tony Bellew, Nathan Cleverly card. Certainly these guys are the most skilled guys in comparison to either Bellew or Nathan Cleverly. Right? I think the Gale, in looking to keep his name in the public and in looking to pay some bills, this is prize fighting, right? These fighters, like the rest of us, have bills to pay, right? Mortgages, credit cards. Uh, keep in mind, many times they're employers, right? Cut men, trainers, sparring partners, right? No doubt James the Gale has his share of bills as we all do. But I just don't believe this was the way to go about it. I think this is a more difficult fight than the public does. Right? Let's just say I privately believe that if I were to put percentages on both guys, let's say I would give the Gale a 60% chance of winning the fight. Well, since the casino is only giving Paraben one chance in six... I'm going where the value is, right? I'll concede that there is a possibility that the Gale might be able to walk him down and take him out. I'll further concede that in a fight in the United Kingdom, especially with a big domestic dust-up in the background, that's possible if the Gale wins the fight. If it goes to the scorecards, I wouldn't be surprised if the Gale wins on the scorecards. So this is a bet I'm prepared to lose. But again, I'm going to go where the value is. And to me, the value is on 5-1 to one underdog Marco Antonio Paraben to win the fight hedged with the Gale by KO. Make no mistake, the Gale is better than Jelly and Love, the Gale is better than Badu Jack, the Gale is better than Saki Obika. Right? Three guys against whom I believe Marco Antonio Parabin looked very good. Right? But, if the Gale doesn't bring his A game, he could well lose this match. Let me go one step further. If Parabin wins this match, and then has a shot on Carl Frotch. As I sit here, I'm not sure who I'm taking in that fight. That's how world-class Paraben is. In terms of mental toughness too, just understand, when Paraben fought Badu Jack, a fight in the United States, right? really more in Badu Jack's backyard. 
I understand that Badu Jack is from a, di a different country, but Badu Jack was fighting out of the United States. Right? Understand that Badu Jack was an unbeaten fighter, 15 and 0. Understand that when Parabin fought Jillian Love, he fought him in his backyard in Las Vegas. Jillian Love was 17 and 0. Understand those are the fights that Parabin has been taking. He and his people believe he's an uncrowned champion. Understand the fight before that was for the belt against Saki Obika. Understand officially that fight was by majority decision. Right? Parabin held his own. This is a tough fight. Whether the public or the casinos believe it is. Right? So, I remain a big fan of the Gale. Percentage-wise, I think the Gale likely wins the fight, but that's not how I'm betting it. I'm going to swing for the fences and take a taste at the 5-1 to one long shot odds. Why? Because I'm a gambler looking for an edge on the casino. I like Parabin to win at 5-1 to one odds. Some casinos have it at 4.5-1. to one. I would bet Parabin all the way down to 3-1 to one odds, right? I like Parabin to win the fight hedged with the Gale by KO. If the Gale comes in, alters the angles on his punches, and is able to walk down Parabin, because Parabin certainly is going to be throwing punches. Right? He's offensively minded. Understand the mindset. Parabin is not here trying to get a lucky punch on James DeGale. Parabin knows he's an elite boxer. He's actually going to the UK to try to methodically outbox James DeGale. Right? So there's going to be give and take. If DeGale's able to get the knockout, good for him and good for me. I'll be collecting on the hedge or at least breaking even on the hedge. Right? But if the Gale shows up thinking Frotch, right? Or thinking some other elite fighter at 168. Maybe a rematch with Groves. Maybe a match with Andre Ward. Right? Maybe a match with Chavez Jr. Right? By the way, let me say I believe he beats Groves in a rematch. And he beat Chavez Jr. Right? A fight against Ward, ooh, that would be the sport at the highest level. Right? We would have to find that one out. But if the Gale comes in a little bit too drunk off of his own reputation, right? Off of his status as Carl Frotch is mandatory, he's going to have a long night. This is the kind of hungry veteran fighter. Right in Parabin, who I typically like to bet on. Right? So, to close, I'm a big DeGale supporter. People know that. But I'm going to go where the value is because that's what I try to do. I like Parabin to win the fight as a 5 to 1 underdog hedged with DeGale by KO. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let's also talk mechanics for a little bit. The Gale comes in out of a southpaw stance. It's true that Parabin is orthodox and shoots a jab. Right? Normally you would expect an orthodox fighter shooting a jab to have some problems landing the jab. And if a guy is heavily dependent on that jab, right, then there could be problems. But understand the secret to Parabin is he adjusts quickly and he's not heavily dependent on his jab. He can actually come in and hook with fighters like Saki Obika. Right? So, you know, I know Saki Obika lost to Anthony Durrell. Understand, Anthony Durrell is a high-level fighter. Right? Just understand that Parabin is enough of a switch, as is the Gale. Right? The Gale's fighting out of a southpaw stance, but he can easily transition 
to righty. This is going to be a high level fight where I don't believe the fact that the Gale comes in with the southpaw stance is going to be as relevant as it would be against the limited opponent. Right? Let me hear from you. Give me your thoughts on the fight. I think Parabin is a live underdog. If I were advising DeGale, I would have told him not to take this fight. Right? Let's hope that DeGale has the same common sense that Tyson Fury had when Fury, looking at a lucrative match against Derek Chisora, foolishly at the last minute flirted with the idea of fighting a world-class opponent in Alexander Ustinov. Obviously something happened after they announced that fight after the guys posed together where someone must have tapped Fury on the shoulder and said, what the hell are you doing? You're looking at millions of dollars against Derek Chisora, a guy we know you can handle. Why would you fight this guy on short notice who's a world-class opponent right fury wisely backed away from what could have been a big mistake right james the gale i'm just telling you marco antonio Ru uh, excuse me marco antonio parabin is an elite opponent at 168 taking him under these circumstances is rife with the possibility of disaster. To casual fight fans, consider this a real fight and a real test between two of the best at 168 pounds. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.